Okay, there we have it. All right. Now, we'll set this here for a sec. Reach around over here. Grab my tape measure. Now, this is six meters of um, three millimeter pipe. And that's giving me 14 inches of heater coil. When Peter did his, like I say, he only had half the copper that I have. And he got 9 inches. And all his documentation is in his video. Um, why reinvent the wheel? It's easy for you to go watch his video. And all I did was basically just unscrew this. I screwed it on one way, screwed it off the other, just like taking a screw in and, in and out of a piece of pipe. This stays with me, and this goes back to my supplier. Now, what I'll do with these ends, I'll probably mount it this way. I may have to take a coil off. But I'm going to put water running in one end. We'll run all the way down there and out here. From here, this water will more than likely go back to my, hot, to my, actual, my drinking water tank. So all I'm doing is I'm going to take the excess heat that my diesel generator is doing, get these coils hot, heat my water, and keep circulating my water so my water my water tanks don't freeze. Now, if you don't know anything about cold temperatures, talk to people that do. If you put water in your freezer, it turns to ice. And when it turns to ice, it expands. If you don't put um, kerosene in your diesel fuel in the winter, you're going to end up with your fuel lines freezing up. Diesel fuel will freeze. It jellies up. It just gets like jello, except it's like kind of liquidy jello. And then it plugs up your filters. It doesn't burn through your unit right. It plugs up everything in the line. And eventually your vehicle, diesel vehicle, doesn't go anywhere because the fuel lines are all packed with crap and it's frozen solid. Gas will do the same thing. If you have a gas powered unit, put methyl hydrate into your gas tank. I they think they say something like a 30 gallon tank, four ounces. But when I lived in northern Manitoba, I used the glug method. I buy it by the gallon and I glug until I think I got enough and it just burns. Because the last thing I need is uh, water in your fuel. Water in your fuel will come from two places. It'll come from the tank you're, put, you're getting your fuel from. It doesn't matter what it is you're getting. And it also comes from your own uh, tank in your vehicle. When your vehicle gets down about halfway, you'll get condensation uh, starting to form. Your gas tank is subject to the heat off your exhaust. It'll start to warm up. And then you shut your vehicle down and all that heat's got to go someplace. The heat turns into water vapor and down it comes. And now it's in your fuel. Now it's plugging up your intake and your tank. It's plugging up all your fuel filters. And that's why you need that. But this, like I say, let's turn the camera around, we level everything. That's how that sits, okay, on my little heater. This bracket I've had to modify. It's made of aluminum, so it was very, very easy to do. This bracket was made for the actual German overspicer heaters. Uh, this is a Chinese knockoff. I've actually talked to the fellow. And I've taken pictures. I showed him what I had to do. These bolt holes, I put paint on all the bolt holes, set the bracket down, and the bolt holes were kind of like off to the side like this, if you can pick up the copper. So all I did was I drilled out the side. I didn't drill it to make it perfect, because there's not enough material between the bolt holes and the slot. So I kind of made it so that the bolt would go through the hole, because that's all I was really concerned about. And then this, I will more than likely have to thread all the way back on to get it to go. But that'll sit kind of like this. 
or like that depending on how I do it and all this will do is give me hot water so now you can have a hot water to bath with you can hot water to do dishes with hot water to keep your drinking water from freezing it's a really good idea so like I say give it a shot and try all your measurements are at the Peter Bruce's um, website this is six meters three millimeter diameter copper and my vise is being held down with three plastic clamps on a table I don't own there's no bolts and if I can do this you can do this it's really simple give it a shot please uh, like and subscribe and there'll be further videos as we go along I'm going to show you how this diesel heater is going into its box make sure that you if you buy one of these heaters or if you own one go to John MCK47 and watch his series on how to run these properly the exhaust can have no restrictions in it your intake may be one you cannot be bent over 270 degrees and everybody likes to do this with their intakes and exhausts it won't run right uh, I listened to his videos and then I went and bought $200 worth of parts before I even ordered the heater. <coughs> Gaskets, new pumps, uh, a new glow plug. I got a 12 millimeter wrench. Now I'm a mechanic so I do have tools. I ground down the wrench like he said shows you how John shows you how to do in his videos. First thing I did when I got this little heater was I tore it all apart. And it's very easy to get that glow plug out, follow John's directions, and it comes out. The glow plug is not tightened down, so you need 10 men and a boy and a crane. Just a little with a wrench, and that's all you need. Mine was almost not tight at all. It was this finger tight. That's all they did. All I had to do is give it just a little, little, little snug on my wrench and the whole thing backs off. And then you unscrew it by its wires by hand. Easy to do. With that, <coughs> pardon me, with that, good day and God bless.